Good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a fantastic day wherever you're at. Like I said in my previous video, we are installing a NEMA 1450 plug. It looks like this. Purchased this from Tesla for $35. They shipped it to me. Very nice product. Anyways, uh, the reason I'm putting this in, I don't want to pay $500 for the Tesla wall charger because I'm renting this house and I'd have to leave it here. I just, I just don't want to do, deal with that. So the next best, next best thing is the NEMA 1450 plug, which will charge the Tesla at 30 miles per hour, which will give me a full tank for every day of work. So I have my buddy Drew here. Uh, Drew is, did you used to be an electrician? Yeah. Used to be an electrician, um, so he knows what he's doing. We're not, he's not a rookie. I'm the rookie here. Uh, I got some quotes to get this done, and they were going to charge me like $3,000, and I started looking for other options. Anyways, through my wife, she knows Drew, it just worked out. So I'm going to have him walk us through exactly what he purchased, so that way if you're looking to do this on your own, this can give you a starter kit, but it, I feel like if you're not an electrician, if you don't have any practice in it, you should not be doing this on your own. <laughs> Yeah, I mean anybody can do it, um, but you know I would definitely if you do do it yourself, I'd have somebody at least come check it out. Yeah, you know, before you could turn it on. Yeah, and that's why uh, that's why we're doing it this route. But this can at least get you started if you're confident in doing things around the house. Maybe you'll go for it, but we'll see. So you got all this stuff from Lowe's. Lowe's. Yeah, okay. you can get it at Home Depot or any hardware store. Honestly, it doesn't really make a difference. The Lowe's was just close to my house. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, so basically see. what we have here is, is I, I bought a little bit of everything in fittings wise because um, you know you can take all these things back of course like whatever you don't use so I always just buy more than what I think I'll need yep. and we can take the rest back but um, these are just a couple 90 uh, schedule 40 PVC conduit and for ground burial um, so these are 90s and I got a couple 45s too so um, just be careful though, if, if it's a real long run, you don't want to use too many 90s or else you'll have a hard time uh, pulling your wire in. So mm. try not to use more than three. So if you do need a fourth 90, uh, use 245s. Okay. And then that'll, that'll help stop it. Okay. Um, and other than that, those are just couplers, nothing too crazy there, and some nuts just to hold everything so together. So one and a quarter inch coupler. Yeah. Uh, what's this thing called? This is, so this is just a regular uh, just four by four metal box for okay. electrical work. Um, basically, you can get that and a cover, which I don't, oh, here it is. So it's basically just, this oh, would be nice. the same thing yeah. that your dryer would look so like, but normally it's behind the wall, Yeah. right? You don't see it, you right. just see the plug, but that's exactly what electricians use for, like your dryer or any, any type of 220 plug, typically. Okay. Cool. Um, you can buy, we bought, I bought regular um, stranded six gauge wire, uh, cause the specs did recommend for 50 amps. So, um, I like to pull just a little bit higher. So you could run an eight, but I recommend a six. And I think the instructions recommend a six as well, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, I'll put those on the screen, the instructions yeah. that I sent him earlier so yeah. you guys can so, see that. Uh, but you can also buy the six gauge wire where it's all together. But since we're pulling it, it's cheaper to buy it stranded. So that's why we did what we did. Cool. Uh, but really, man, that's, that's about got it. some string there for the pipe. Uh, you know, if you fit your pipe all together or if you have your pipe the way you want it, you can just pull the wires in and put it together later. Yeah. It's completely up to you, whatever you're and comfortable it's, with. It's kind of nice that it's only going to be, I think, 116 today. Yeah. So no, it's chilly out terrible. here. Yeah, it's not bad at all. But anyways, we're, uh, yeah, so that's what we're doing. I'm just, I'm doing the manual labor, the part that takes no brains. I am uh, digging up this line here, and then uh, Drew's doing all the hard work. So the, the work that takes thought. So that's, that's my position, and I uh, hope you guys enjoy the video. All right, seven days later, we are... Uh, we're still out here. We actually found an ancient artifact. We found this little milk jug, possibly from the early 21st century. But um, what I've done so far, we're taking the conduit and we're going under the sidewalk. And I've actually used my brand new Sunjo pressure washer to blast an underground hole through here um, so it can loosen up the dirt. So that's what we're done. We, I just saw water break through and come to the other side. So we've broken through. Um, we just need to get that completed. So what Drew's done here, we're just working with 45 and 90 degree angle pipe. And so I'll show you. It drops right down through here, comes around, and then we're heading straight to the underside of the sidewalk. We're gonna come right there, along here, up here through the wall, and the plug will be right here. And then the plug for the Tesla's right here, so it'll be very convenient. In that sense. Um, we also had to go to Home Depot and Ace for, what was that part? The breaker. The breaker, the yeah. 50 amp breaker. Mm -hmm. And we were having trouble finding it. We think maybe, they're sourced from Mexico. That's I don't know why. Yeah. 
No we don't know. Yeah, so we don't know why there's we couldn't find it, but we got one. It's gonna work for now, and uh, that's the update. But it seems to be going pretty well. Quick update for you guys. This is day two. We day one. It was about 116, and it was we had to dig all this out. We couldn't get under the sidewalk here. We finally broke through and got under the sidewalk, got that done, and then we just fished all of this wire through back from uh, the box. So now the next step is to break through the wall here and then put the 1450 in um, on the other side. But yeah, it's, the, the worst part by far was going under the sidewalk. Terrible. I mean, without that, we were done hours and hours ago, but that just, that took us the most work. So just something to think about on your route, but still better than spending $3,000 to put this in. Give you guys a little update here. Um, all wire is put through, nothing is connected yet. Had some trouble getting through here, but not nearly as hard as going under the sidewalk. So now all four of these wires are through. And Drew, can you explain like why there's four wires? Like just, yeah, so, I, I just don't understand it yeah, at all. Yeah, according to the spec out on the Tesla plug, um, it's just a normal 220, but the way they have theirs wired um, basically is that there's a, a neutral, two hots in a ground, which is pretty typical with a lot of things. Okay. Um, a lot of 220 stuff like your dryer, it doesn't need a neutral. So a lot of times you don't see that many wires in it. So typically that's why people just don't normally see the four wires, but Got usually it. it's pretty standard stuff. Okay, cool. So we're in the final steps of the process here. Yeah, so it's just uh, white to white green to green and then these two hot skull and breaker cool pretty simple man nothing right. nothing crazy and you can see over here you got the green side the white side and then those two hots will go kind of like this and you probably already have a breaker in your box that looks very similar so just copy it okay cool Oops. so that just kind of clamps all those wires down. oh yeah it's just a screw with a hole Hmm. That's all it is, and, and sometimes too you'll get these little things where the wire just a little bit bigger, and if it's too big to go in there, you can't fit it, you can, you can clip a row or so off, you know. Huh. Oh, that's cool, that's all it is. That's all it is, man. And like this right here, so this rubber handled screwdriver, Yeah. if you just use one hand and keep the other hand free, Yeah. if you slip into something on accident, yeah. it won't shock you. Oh, nice. Because you're not grounded. So you, as long as this hand's not like touching the box, or yeah. just leave it. They call it the one-handed rule, put one behind your back and get a rubber handle. And if you go like this, if you accidentally slip into the bus, yeah. it'll be fine. Cool. Because you, you don't have anything to connect the connection. Got it. It has to be positive to negative and negative to positive. So Got it. you just, you don't want to connect the chain. Yeah. I would recommend too, if you have, if your breaker's finished with like, see this one is a 220. Mm -hmm. These are singles. I'd put it on this side. You don't want to stack. Like, see how they do these? Yeah. You don't want to do that. You want to stagger them back and forth. Got it. Because that creates a lot of extra work on that side of the bus. So okay. you want to equal, like, equal equilibrium going back and forth. So there's too much load on this side. You feel? It, no. Is that it's, the right term? To use? I would. Yeah. Load okay. would be the right word to use. It's fine. I just don't like to do that, and that's my personal. Um, yeah. But you're gonna see that, like, especially like, when was this house probably built? Probably 70s or 80s. That's what I'm saying. You're gonna see it, because back then they didn't know. Yeah. You know what I mean? We've come a long way with technology, but like, if your box looks like that, yeah. don't take the time to fix it. It's not worth that. Yeah. But I would, like, I mean, like, what I'm gonna do for a bin today, like, I would pull them out, look at them. Yeah. Does that bus work look okay. You know, you can shut them off right here. Yeah. Shut them off, pull them out. Uh, we'll look, see what it looks like. Yeah. If it looks yeah. okay, you're fine. So same process in here. You're clamping those yep. wires, those exposed copper wires down. Nice. Yep. That's all it is, man. Simple, simple. Well, and then you know how me and you went back and forth too, so make sure whatever Tesla you get, read the specs. Yeah. Because, like, we were gonna cut it a little closer with a 40 amp. Yeah, so like what, me, when me and you were talking, um, you know, it said six gauge wire. Well, six gauge wire is usually good for 60 amps. It's usually what you put on it. Yeah. But then, you know, when you send me a specs, it said 50, right? So make sure you put it on what they Just say. Just do what they say, yeah. yeah. Exactly. And again, um, a lot of that too is just for safety. You know what I mean? Like yeah. They're going to overwork it because, you know, there may be the possibility that, you know, um, you're always going to have like a storm, you get a surge yeah. or something like that. So what they're trying to do is, is they want the, the wire to be able to sustain a surge, but they want this breaker to trip first. Yeah. So this is your first line of protection. 
and then that plug will also have protection and then i'm sure somewhere in the tesla has another some sort so of protection. in the tesla you can actually hit plus or minus for how many amps you want to pull right so you could even charge it 20 miles an hour just to make sure you're not going anywhere near the max exactly so yeah that's they, exactly what it is uh, they are just protecting protecting your investment yeah let's put it that way that's a good way to put it sometimes in things and you will come across it um what it is is they'll be uh they're stiff because mm. like they want a good seated connection so they make them really good and tight mm. you know what i mean so yeah so that way no one's gonna bump into this exactly. and knock it loose exactly make sure I'm okay. we're about complete here the plug is in and we're just gonna go finish up with the box and then moment of truth see how many uh miles per hour we're charging it Alright. Oh, moment of truth, folks. Negotiating, negotiating, negotiating. We're green. There's no fire. Okay. Let's get this thing unlocked. Just did it now. So there you go. It and it's going 239 volts at 29 miles an hour, 27 miles an hour. Is so that that's good? right yeah. on. That's what it is. What's 30 is what it's supposed to be. Okay. Perfect. So we're dead on. Let me go. Let's go. Right. So what's it doing here? So it should have 30 a leg. So we got. Yeah, it's, that's what it does. It pulls uh, 32 amps is what I think that we read. Right. Okay, so 30, 30 a leg. So I'm, I'm running high on this side. Okay. So that's a little high? It's running a little high on this side, but again, that's why they put the six gauge wire in with the safety of the 50 amp breaker. Okay. Right? So if anything happens and it gets too hot, too much higher than that, yeah. they want, basically I'd, I'd say what they're, the reasoning behind it is they want this to go ahead and trip and protect all of their stuff. Okay. Right? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Or Perfect. all of your stuff, your investment in Tesla. Right. So I'd say that's probably why they do it. All right. So, I, you know, looking back now, that, I, it, that actually does make quite a bit of sense. Yeah. So, which, and again, I we just did everything according to what Tesla said. So. Yeah, we basically stuck to the book and we'll, we'll need to swap this out. Yeah, um, yeah. But, okay, sweet. Yeah, if you have a square D home line breaker right now, there's a shortage, so if you can't find one, don't yeah. feel bad about it. We yeah, we, we searched all of Arizona. Absolutely. Well, it's mission accomplished for now. Uh, there's a couple things we have to change up here. We have to tighten this up, make it a little more flush. Probably gonna have to go back in and cut the wire, make it shorter. But for the most part, it was charging at 29 miles per hour as expected. Um, it's, it's great, everything's running great, and I'm really appreciative that Drew was able to help me out with that. So, uh, yeah, Tesla's set, but for you ST homies, ST is still out here. Uh, and I'm actually gonna wash it up right now so I can get some pictures and post it for sale. It's a little dirty. Uh, the interior's pristine. Just gonna post, uh, you know, clean up the exterior and get it in good shape for when people uh, start coming to take a look at it. I do have it posted for sale and offer up right now, so if you're interested, you can check it out there. But, uh, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed that video today, a little how-to for DIY. But again, I, I wouldn't, I don't know, unless you're really comfortable with that type of stuff, I wouldn't just tackle it. Like for me, example, I have no experience with uh, electricity and, and all that type of stuff. I can dig the holes, I can do the piping. Um, but understanding what's safe and what's not, not, not my expertise. So thank you for watching, appreciate your support. Looks like you guys like the uh, Model Y content I'm putting out, so plenty more to come. In every aspect of the car, we're going to be doing races against the M2. I'll be taking it to the canyons, all that type of stuff, because uh, it's a fun car to drive, and I want to experience all of that. Thanks again. We'll see you in the next video.